On August the 15th, 1944, American and British troops invaded the south coast of France. Unlike D-Day in Normandy, ten weeks before, Operation Dragoon, as it was called, has passed by relatively unnoticed. Yet behind it was a ferocious dispute. The landings had been angrily opposed by the British Prime Minister, Winston Churchill. He told the American President, Franklin Roosevelt, they were... The first major strategic and political error for which we too have to be responsible. The festering sore which underlay Churchill's outburst was not about his enemy, Hitler, but his ally, the Soviet leader, Joseph Stalin. Operation Dragoon was the final act in a mental duel between Stalin and Churchill, in which each man secretly plotted to impose his own will on the future of post-war Europe. As their duel progressed, Roosevelt entered the arena and also started to plot, behind Churchill's back. Eventually, he'd become the pivotal figure upon whom the duel's outcome would depend. At stake was the future freedom and independence of hundreds of millions of people. On the evening of Saturday, June the 21st, 1941, Winston Churchill held a dinner party at Chequers, the Prime Minister's country residence, in the Chiltern Hills outside London. Conversation was dominated by reports that Hitler was about to tear up his pact with Stalin and invade Russia. Among the guests was Churchill's private secretary, John Colvin. The PM says he will go all out to help Russia. I said that for him, the arch-anti-communist, this was bowing down in the House of Rimen. He replied that he had only one single purpose, the destruction of Hitler, and his life was much simplified thereby. If Hitler invaded hell, he would at least make a favorable reference to the devil. In the small hours of June the 22nd, three million Nazi troops smashed their way into Russia. Immediately, the arch-anti-communist welcomed Stalin as an ally. But Stalin remained suspicious of Churchill and believed that what he really wanted was for Germany and Russia to destroy each other. Churchill, for his part, feared that Stalin would do another deal with Hitler. In December 1941, the British Foreign Secretary, Anthony Eden, went to Moscow to start negotiations for a formal treaty with Russia, which would try to dispel these mutual suspicions. As Eden arrived, the Red Army was counter-attacking, but German forces remained dangerously close to Moscow. Even so, Stalin was already thinking long-term he intended to exact his price for carrying the brunt of the fight, particularly territory. Eden noted Stalin's demands. January the 3rd, 1942. As regards the special interests of the Soviet Union, Stalin desired the restoration of the position in 1941 prior to the German attack. In respect to the Baltic states, Finland and Bessarabia. Stalin also wanted back the eastern part of Poland. In sum, all the territory he'd grabbed as part of the Nazi-Soviet Pact of 1939. Top of his list was the Baltic states, which had only gained their independence from Russia after World War I. Eden told Churchill, I am clear that this question is for Stalin the acid test of our sincerity. Nothing we and the United States of America can do or say will affect the situation at end of war. If the Russians are victorious, they will be able to establish these frontiers, and we shall certainly not turn them out. Initially, 
Churchill was horrified by any thought of conceding to Stalin's demands. He replied to Eden, The 1941 frontiers of Russia were acquired by acts of aggression in shameful collusion with Hitler. The transfer of the people of the Baltic states to Soviet Russia against their will will be contrary to all the principles for which we are fighting this war. I know President Roosevelt holds this view as strongly as I do. These principles had been enshrined in the Atlantic Charter, which Roosevelt and Churchill had agreed during their meeting in Newfoundland in August 1941. Most importantly, they guaranteed the future freedom and independence of the nations conquered by Hitler. But Eden argued that what mattered more than principles was Stalin's cooperation, both now and in the future. Probably Stalin's demand is intended as an acid test to see what value we attach to that cooperation and what sacrifice of principle we're prepared to make in order to achieve it. In the coming weeks, Churchill's attitude began to be colored by disastrous turns in the war. In the Far East, Singapore had fallen to the Japanese. The Battle of the Atlantic was grim. Finally, Churchill did an about turn. On March the 7th, 1942, he wrote to Roosevelt that the Baltic states could be sacrificed to keep Stalin on side. The increasing gravity of the war has led me to feel that the principles of the Atlantic Charter ought not to be construed so as to deny Russia the frontier she occupied when Germany attacked her. The next day, the British ambassador to Washington, Lord Halifax, was summoned to the White House to discuss Churchill's cable. Roosevelt showed himself just as willing as Churchill to sacrifice the Baltic states, though he preferred to do it more furtively. FDR's mind is already moving along the only remaining line, that is of saying to Stalin that we all recognize his need for security, that to put anything on paper now is impossible, that future of Baltic states clearly depends upon Russian military progress, and that neither United States nor Great Britain would or could turn them out. Why then should Stalin worry? As early as March 1942, Churchill and Roosevelt had shown themselves willing to give away the future freedom of three independent nations. They'd been driven by the fear that Stalin and Hitler would do another deal. But, though the thought once or twice crossed the minds of both dictators, it was never a real possibility. Their submission to Stalin was unnecessary. It was also the beginning of a slippery slope. In May 1942, Stalin's foreign minister, Vyacheslav Molotov, dashingly clad in his flying gear, landed in Scotland. The first trip to Britain by a top Bolshevik since the revolution. Having nipped back into his plane to change into his suit, he took the train down to London. There he was to finalize the treaty between Britain and Russia, which would conclude the negotiations begun in Moscow five months before. Stalin had given Molotov an extensive shopping list of territory that Britain must agree as part of the post-war Soviet Union. Then, suddenly, while Molotov was in London, Germany launched its summer offensive in Russia. Three Soviet armies were being smashed at the Battle of Kharkov. Stalin's priorities instantly changed. He was desperate for military help from the British and Americans. He cabled Molotov to sign the treaty and stop arguing about territory. That would look after itself. 24th of May, 1942. The question of future borders will be decided by force. The military relief Stalin wanted was a cross-channel invasion of France as a second front against Hitler. 